That's uh, the team back there. We're utilizing the bathroom as an equipment storage. That's Anna, producer, yes. Beauty with Susan Yara. And uh, I've got these things on. Yeah, and you can get, you guys can see my hyperpigmentation in this light. This is what I'm always talking about. I have actual hyperpigmentation, melasma from pregnancy. So I'm gonna spend the year getting rid of that. But today, you guys, I have these on and I have these on because, ta-da! Nikki is here. She is my makeup artist. Um, you guys have heard me talk about her and everything, but you're constantly asking how she does my makeup. You wanna see a video. So that's what we're gonna do today. Vlog style, we're going casual. This is how I get ready for a video for mixed makeup. And that's Carly on camera today. Looking cute with her. Target faux fur jacket. I love it. I love it, it matches the hair. Yes. It's very cute. <laughs> you ready to record? Yes. Let's do this. Let's do it. I also cannot wait to show you guys my lipstick changes today because I just got these from It Cosmetics and these nudes will definitely be worn today. You guys ready to see what she does? So she always starts with this. Yeah, so we already did her skin prep. We did a toner to soften her skin. We did two layers of moisturizer. We did, this, these are the Erno Lonslo um, eye patches, but we switch them up all the time. All the time. So I'm actually gonna keep them up for a little bit longer and I'm gonna do an eye base. I just use a concealer from NARS. This is the Creamy Radiant Concealer and a small flat brush. And I'm just gonna lightly, not carve out her brow, but just kind of brighten that area. And this is gonna act like our eye base. This is all I really use for her eyes before I do her shadow. So I don't like eye primers personally. I think they're too thick and heavy. And Susan just doesn't need it. Like her eyeshadow never creases. She doesn't have super oily lids. So this is usually enough as a base for her. So I'll just blend that all over. And you can see it brightens from this eye to that eye. You can see the difference too of why we do that step. And I'm wearing so much moisturizer today because I got a laser treatment. I'm like in the process of like three laser treatments. I'm on round two. So my skin is drier than usual, but we, mm -hmm. we actually put a lot of moisturizer instead of primer too, right? Yeah. So same thing on the other brow. She doesn't know it, but I give her a highlighted unibrow. I do know it. <laughs> so now I'm gonna take an eye palette. I've had this for years and I've gone through so many of them. It's the Hourglass Cosmetics Ambient Lighting Palette. It's for the face for highlighting, but I love it as an eyeshadow palette too. So I'm gonna take that light color in the center and I don't really do a strong brow bone highlight on Susan. We just keep it nice and natural. We're just kind of building a foundation for the rest of the eye makeup. Yeah. So same palette, I'm gonna take this darker shade. It's like a nice warm tone. And I like to start with the light color in the crease and just really put that down as a base. So using a blending brush, I switched to a fluffy blending brush and I'm just softly going across her crease. We love earth tones. So we keep it all like the brown neutral family. We want to show in video, but not be like too aggressive. Mm -hmm. I start in the outer corner and I just bring whatever product I have left over inward. And you can really kind of just go for it with this color because it's so light and natural. You just kind of buff it all over. So that's our base. So now I'm taking, this is an Inglot shadow palette that I made myself. It's actually the JLo special edition shadows that she um, collaborated with Inglot on. I think they're gorgeous. They're so pretty and they all have like a shimmer to them, but they're not like overpowering the shimmer department. They're, like, they're overpriced though. So I'm just going over that first shade that we applied in the crease and just building it up and blending it all over. Keeping it nice and soft, same fluffy brush. I love these shadows are so pretty. She came out with a lot of them too, but these were like, I think she came out with like 10 or 15 shades and these are my favorites out of that whole collection. You can't buy them anymore though. That's the only bummer. Mm. They're gone. So I'm taking my last color. I love these so much. They're cream eyeshadows from Chanel. The only bummer is they dry out really quick. So I'm gonna take a setting spray. This is the all nighter spray. And I'm just gonna kind of basically reactivate it. So spray it with any cream shadow. If they dry out, just take a setting spray. Fix Plus is amazing for Mac for this, but I ran out of that stuff. So I've been using this and it works just fine. So reactivating it, it's super creamy now. And taking a smaller blending brush. This one's from Mac, it's a 217. If you like eyeshadow and you don't have this brush, you have to go out and get it. It is like the holy grail of blending brushes. Yeah, 217, ask any makeup artist or makeup collector. It's like the best brush out there. So I'm just taking this color and applying it all over her eyelid and I'm blending it just a little bit into that crease color that we already have on. Just keeping it soft. It's a really pretty earth tone brown. 
You can even take this product too, since it is a cream and you can use your fingertip to apply it. It's so easy. Okay, so now I'm moving on to eyeliner. I love this color in her. It's from MAC, it's Costa Riche. It's an eye curl, so it's creamy. So I'm gonna apply it first and I'm gonna blend it out so it's nice and soft and not too harsh. So why, do you, why do you use this color versus like a black? You know me, I do not like black on you. I, it's, it's rare that we, I mean, if ever, do we ever pull out black? No, yeah. unless it's a liquid liner like we're going for. Yeah. Like you'll do black when I'm not doing your makeup and you pull it off, but I don't know, I just don't, it's too harsh. So we have like a foundation on. You don't have to be super clean and precise with it because we're gonna go in and buff it out. So that's like the foundation. Now we're gonna go in with a small blending brush and just kind of pull that out. And don't be too concerned too. Well, I'm never too concerned with the outer corner. If it's too messy, it doesn't matter because I'm gonna go in after and clean it up. So it's great to just kind of go in there and blend and do your thing because you're gonna clean it up after anyway. Another her eyeliners on, I'm gonna do individuals. And I usually do a mix of small individuals and medium in length. And this is my favorite brand, it's the Mondo Studio. Well, this and Ardell's are great too. I mean, this is probably the most time consuming part of our makeup in the morning is just getting these bad boys on. So now that her lashes are on, I'm gonna give them a moment to let the glue fully dry before I go in with mascara and to curl them. So now it's our favorite time. We get to pull these bad boys off. And because we like extra moisture, I usually go back in with another eye cream. This is the, we switch it up, but this is a Lemieux anti-wrinkle corrector. I love this one too. And the reason you guys, so first off, the eye patches in the morning, that's Many to reasons. depuff. Yeah. And I mean, there's serum in that too, Right. but mostly to, to depuff. And then this is to just lock it all in. It's just get that, that added moisture. layer of moisture because you know, we. We wear, you wear the makeup all day on set. You know, we don't like dry eyes, so we like to get it nice and hydrated and nice and smooth before we put that concealer on. Yeah. And I also, you guys, I'm getting older, so I have crow's feet. So the makeup can sink into crow's feet pretty easily. Everyone's like, what crow's feet? You have perfect skin. Whatever. Um, before I get too far into the eyes, I am gonna go and clean up, as promised, that outer corner that we got a little messy with. You can see like, so that line's a little too thick. Look straight ahead, just with a, uh, Q-tip and makeup remover, just clean up that edge. We usually end up with a little baby wing liner, just enough to pull your eyes up, up. and out. That's one of the best tips Nikki's ever given me. Nice. I used to go up with my makeup and make my eyes look like they're going up. Cause sometimes I used to like bring my liner just straight out. Straight out. Yeah. yeah. It just gives you that really pretty lift and then combined with the lashes, once we curl them, she's gonna have this beautiful open eye effect. And then whatever's left over of my eye cream, just gonna pop a little bit more on. I do think this is such an important step before concealer because it gives your concealer a better finish. Mm -hmm. So if you start out with a dry under eye, your concealer under eye is gonna look dry. So now we're gonna curl her lashes. Curling lashes is important, right? I love it. I think it's a great way to finish your lashes and give them a lift. Once you do a coat of mascara, they'll calm down just a little bit, mm -hmm. but. It also makes the lashes kind of like press with my lashes, right? Absolutely. Just with the mascara too, it, if you do both those things, it's gonna help to blend your lashes with the fake ones. Look who's here. Someone woke up early from her nap. There's a lot of commotion happening today. She doesn't want to sleep. She wants to sleep. She just, it's a rough day. Auntie Anna for the win. So mascara time, I use a fan brush. I mix a dark brown mascara first. Oh, that I don't think I knew. Did I know that? I don't think so. And I'll usually just do dark brown on her bottom lashes too, so it's not too intense. That I knew. And then I'll blend a little bit of black just at like the tip of the lash. Uh, I did not know this. Yeah. Do a little combo. It just looks more natural. I feel like if you do too much black mascara, they just end up looking like really fake. Now I'm going in with a little bit of the black mascara and just getting a little bit on top of that brown. So I'm gonna illuminate her skin first before I do her foundation. I'm using the Dior, it's um, the Universal Liquid Illuminator. And I'm just gonna hit the high points of her skin first. So the top of her cheekbone, I like to do the bridge of the nose. I'm doing it first because I don't want it to be too intense on camera. So it'll be more of like a lit from within kind of look. <laughs> <laughs> lit from within. Rather than like an obvious highlight. But I love this stuff. It's so nice and it's so easy to blend on the skin. But when you put it on makeup, it can sometimes be hard to yeah. work with. Every once in a while I'll try to put it on top too, but you have to be very careful when you're doing that because it does separate makeup if you have foundation on first. It's a great mixer too. Like you can mix it into your foundation or your tinted moisturizer and give it like 
a more of a glow. So now we're going in with foundation and using the same brush, starting on the center of her face first and then bringing it out. We're trying something new, right? New color on me? Yeah, we're actually, so I always do the Armani Luminous Silk on you in 5.5 and I mix it with like a 3.75. Mm -hmm. Today I'm mixing the 5.5, which is like our standard. And then I'm mixing a teeny bit of the Dior Face and Body Foundation in 1.0. We really like the Dior face and body. It's so nice. It's just hard to find the right colors yeah. at the actual stores. Yep. Dior. And they have a they have a really extensive color range too, which is great. I think we need to get you all the colors. I think we need all the colors for sure. Dior. Are you hearing? Are you listening to us? We're big fans. So you can see I'm mixing that lighter shade with that darker shade. And both these foundations are not super full coverage. They're more like a light to medium coverage, but they're buildable. We don't like a ton of coverage. We like to see your skin underneath still and like some of your cute freckles, but. She calls them freckles, I call them molasses. I think they're freckles. <laughs> so I'm gonna go with the Becca Under Eye Brightening Cream. This is such a great product to have on hand. You see where she's got like a little bit of dark pigmentation. She doesn't, you know, super dark circles, obviously. Why? But it's just gonna add a nice brightening effect. And I really just pop it in that inner corner of the eye. I love this stuff, actually. I love it too. And I ask her every single time, I'm like, what is it that you're putting <laughs> on me? And it's the same answer every yep. single time. And I'm like, why did I ask that again? But I do. Two years and counting. Right? Same product. I know. So this product to me is best applied with your fingertip. The warmth of your fingertip really helps to melt that product in. You can see too, like she's already nice and brightened. So it's the brighten, color correct, and then we'll do concealer on top. So I'm taking that same concealer that I used earlier underneath her brow bone and on her lid, and I'm gonna mix this concealer with um, a darker shade. So I'm using honey and then Cust canel. Oh, canel? Yeah, custard's too yellow. Custard's too yellow? Custard's so yellow. On you, it looks really yellow. So I'm just gonna take both of these. There's a lot of noise in here, you guys, sorry. This is normal everyday noise happening in here. My husband is moving a baby swing right now behind us. You can hear it bumping. So I mix those two. I'm using a blending brush, an eyeshadow blending brush actually. This one's for MAC too, it's like a 286. You can see like this does have a pinkier undertone, so it is gonna help to brighten even more and color correct. So I initially apply it with a brush and then I go back in and I blend it out with a beauty blender, but the initial application is with the brush and I just kind of apply it where I want it. I'll buff out the edges. I'll blend it just a little bit into her cheek and then just up a little bit towards her temple and then straight down the side of her nose. So now I'm taking a damp beauty sponge. This one's actually um, a Real Techniques sponge and they made a smaller one that is perfect for under the eye. So I'm just taking that, make sure it's damp because it really helps to blend the product if it's damp. And I'm just buffing that product in. It also helps to pick up whatever leftover product the brush left behind. Like, so if you went a little too ham and you applied too much of that concealer, yeah. it's gonna it's gonna suck up that extra product. Now I'm gonna go in and set her under eye and do a little mini bake. So same sponge, I flip the side and we're gonna go in with the Laura Mercier translucent powder and just kind of press that product on top. Normally when you bake too, you leave behind a visible amount of powder. This is such a fine amount of powder that we're just kind of pressing it in. And it's not gonna look like a heavy baked look. It's just like a very, very light natural bake. I make sure that I bake under her eye because we start her makeup so early and then we shoot all day and I don't wanna have to worry about her eyes creasing or anything um, cracking or looking too cakey under the eye. This just gives us a really flawless under eye look for the entire day. You can see the difference too. So now we're gonna go in and contour. This is like, I talk about this product all the time. You actually gave me your old one because you weren't using it. And you know how much I love this cream bronzer from Chanel. And I'm taking a small stippling brush. I'm gonna go right underneath her cheekbones. So her cheekbones here, I'm gonna go right underneath. We just do honestly like the tiniest touch of this stuff. Like I'm barely dipping my brush in there. So you can kind of see the difference too. It's so light, and especially on camera too, it looks really nice and natural. Um, if anything, it's just kind of warming up your skin rather than contouring. You don't need to contour it. So now that her contour is on, I'm gonna go in with a blush. I usually do a cream blush on you. It just looks so pretty and glowy and like natural. This is a Stila Convertible Lip and Cheek Color. 
and it's in peony. You've been using this for years. I love this color. This and um, Camellia. Mm -hmm. So I'm taking a big brush and I'm just gently tapping that cream on top of her cheeks. You'll notice too that I'm tapping the product on because she already has her face makeup on. She's set with powder. She's got her contour underneath. So if I buffed it in and did like circular motions, I would move all that product underneath around and just ruin it. So I'm just kind of patting it on top. So now that her face is pretty much totally on, I'm gonna go back in with a little bit of powder. I use like the finest powder I can find on you. It's a hyaluronic hydro powder from By Terry. And I just take whatever's in my cap, which is usually just nothing and a small fluffy brush. I'll just hit her T-zone or anywhere that I think is gonna show up too shiny on camera, which is usually the T-zone. This powder is amazing if you have drier skin or if you're more sensitive or if you just want it to look super light and natural. It's not a heavy powder. It doesn't settle into fine lines and it actually gives you a really beautiful airbrushed finish. And I, I love something to note that Nikki uses a small brush to apply the powder. Yeah, so it doesn't go all over the place. Mm -hmm. This gives me more control. Mm -hmm. Control. Yeah. Control. All about control. Now I'm in control. So someone in our private Facebook group uh -huh. said that you can drink a straw using your tongue and to try it. And it's real hard. It's like, what? Oh, I've seen that. Yeah. I see models do that. Okay. So you're so distracting. We, sometimes we take way too long to do makeup because we're laughing and we're telling stories and it's like our catch up time. And then Red comes in and she's like, guys, <laughs> we're in late. So this is my, one of my favorite steps of all time. It's the Pure Thomas Roth 24 karat gold pure luxury lift and firm prism cream. So what usually ends up happening is I love glow, Susan loves glow, and you know we we start out kind of glowy, and then we go and we sit behind the camera with all the lights, and we look on camera on the monitor, and we're like, oop, too much glow. So inevitably, I usually end up toning it down a teeny bit, which is so sad. But um, I never learned my lesson. I I love giving her a glow and we usually start out with too much and then we tone it down and then we end up with the perfect amount. So I'm taking that same color that we used on the lid earlier, that cream Chanel color and a small pencil brush and I'm just gonna lightly shade her bottom lash line. It's just gonna tie the whole look together and it's gonna give her a nice definition on the bottom lash line without being too intense. This is a hard part. It's not easy to sit through. Going back with that dark brown mascara and I'm just gonna lightly get her bottom lashes. So now I'm gonna do her brows. I'm using a product that I've used for literally years and I've made you buy it. I've made you use it on yourself. It's a MAC brow set. It's gonna lighten your brows a teeny bit. I like your brows a little bit lighter than your hair. I just think it looks softer on camera too. So I'm just pushing that product into her brows and I'm gently brushing her brows off to the side. So it's tinting them, it's giving them a fuller, thicker look and it's also grooming them at the same time. And this product has hold too, so it's gonna hold her brows in place all day. There, are there fibers in this one? Yeah. Yeah, so it's kind of like using a fiber mascara where it coats your lashes and gets them like thicker. Same thing for your brows. So that's her brows just with that brow gel and no other color. I'm still going with a really small flat angle brush and I'm gonna take honestly the tiniest bit of color. This is from the Anastasia Brow Pro Palette. I'm taking the shade Medium Brown, and I'm really just so lightly filling in any gaps that I see. She always has one gap right here, so you always get that spot. And then we usually bring this brow a little bit closer in. I like doing that brow gel first because it really helps me to see where I need the product afterwards, like where I need more filling, rather than just going in and being like too heavy handed. It's a good starting point. Nikki thinks I do my brows too dark. When you do them. When I do them. Join the club. I think Nikki thinks everybody does their brows dark. <gasps> That's right. Oh my God. There's truth to it. A little bit. Oh, most of the time I look in the mirror, I'm like, yeah, Nikki's right. Really? Yeah. Same. Yeah. I look at my pictures, I'm like, damn it, my brows are too dark. They just take over your face. All right, so this is my makeup look. And then I basically change my lipstick every time we shoot a video. And I kind of stick with the nude colors because it's just easy. I really like nude colors. It's the perfect time to show you these lipsticks. I've partnered with It Cosmetics on their new Pillow Lips lipsticks. And they're awesome. They come in 14 really amazing shades. Like I said, I go with nudes mostly. This color is Vision Cream. I'm gonna put it on my lips because it has collagen in it and other really nice ingredients that basically don't feather up on your lips and they make your lips look nice and plump and juicy.
They have matte and cream finishes. I went with the matte finish only because I want it to look nice on camera. I always prep my lips with like a lip gloss anyway. So I went with this color. It is matte and it is so pretty. And it's a great way to like start my look for my video day, for a video shoot day, because I'm gonna change up, because we shoot lots of videos in a day, we try to shoot as many videos as we can. So I'm gonna change up my lip color, and that essentially changes up my look. Changing up my lip color and then changing up my outfit, and that's how I do it throughout the day. All right, so on to my second video. New shirt means I'm gonna put on a new lipstick color. This one is Wistful, and I just love, look at this, you guys. It glides on so pretty, and that is matte. It's, it's a matte color, but it feels so nice. And because it's got that collagen, like I told you, collagen's a really wonderful moisturizer for your skin, but it also has vitamin E in it, it has shea butter, I love shea butter. Um, it also has a tri-oil complex, that's what they call it. Uh, so it just makes it feel really nice. It glides onto your lips. And the color is just, look at that color, so pretty. All right, going to shoot my last video with like the boom mic in there. And uh, I'm gonna change my lip color. I didn't wanna take that last one off, Wistful. It's such a me color. I didn't wanna, I like wanted to wear it the rest of the day. But this one is just as pretty. This is the Humble color, also matte formula. And I'll, I'll say one thing that I also really like about these colors is that I can easily remove them from my lips to keep changing the colors during the day. And it's not irritating my lips at all because it feels so nice. And there we go. And that is it for my makeup today. I am about to go throw on a new sweater, get out of the robe. You guys, big thank you to my makeup artist, Nikki LaRose. I was gonna say makeup by Nikki LaRose because that's how you'll find her. She's on Instagram. Also, thank you to It Cosmetics. I love these lipsticks, you guys. You have to try them. You're always asking about the lipstick I'm, lipsticks I'm wearing in my videos. And these ones are winners for sure. Uh, find me on Instagram and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.